There are many medications to manage multiple sclerosis disease activity and to help manage MS symptoms. But patients often come in with the ideas about alternative types of therapy and want to know also about the importance of diet. Dr. Alan Bowling will discuss some of these alternative therapies and the importance that diet can have in overall health and even better management of the MS itself. I'm Dr. Alan Bowling. I'm a neurologist based in Denver, Colorado. I'm a physician associate at the Colorado Neurological Institute and a clinical professor of neurology at the University of Colorado. I'm here to talk about diet and MS. And what I find quite striking about diet and MS is it's often stated that it has no relevance to MS, that we have to do more studies to clarify it. I would actually argue that to not include diet in the treatment plan for people with MS is a healthcare opportunity that's missed thousands of times per day in our country. Diet has the potential to improve MS symptoms such as fatigue. It has potential to slow down the MS disease course. And perhaps most importantly, diet has a very important role in maintaining health and helping prevent diseases that we know can potentially negatively impact MS. So my interest in this topic goes back more than five decades, back when I was four or five years old sitting at the family dining room table. I have very clear memories of my mother, a very strong-minded dietitian, my father, a very strong-minded physician, and the two of them at that point and all during my growing up years having very intense discussions about whether drugs or food would be a better treatment option in particular medical conditions. During those uh, discussions at the table, I quickly thought, well, how about both? Why does it have to be one or the other? So that idea stayed with me and has actually permeated my career and it has led me through my career to blend treatment approaches that sometimes are uh, thought to be uh, counter to each other. In terms of particular patient experiences, addressing diet in the context of ne neurological and specifically MS care has been part of my career for a few decades. So I have hundreds of my patients who clearly have benefited from uh, changes in their diet, and this is something I've observed, having followed people for 20 plus years. People who initially see me with an MS diagnosis, kind of deer in the headlights, and then over time, addressing diet as well as other lifestyle factors, and really seeing a significant benefit, especially over the course of 5, 10, 20 years, and actually seeing how healthy people are able to be within the setting of an MS diagnosis through healthy eating and also uh, using other uh, healthy lifestyle strategies. So in terms of diet and MS, how do you do that now with the evidence that we have? I'd actually argue that there are four uh, essential elements to it, and I think often when people think about diet, start thinking about dietary supplements. I think that's okay to a certain degree if you're going to uh, take that approach, then I would put uh, vitamin D at the top of the list for particular nutrients. I, there's evidence that low vitamin D can potentially increase risk for MS. If you have MS, it can potentially increase risk for attacks, disability progression, new MRI lesions. So uh, the absolute definitive studies with vitamin D and MS have not been reported yet. They're being conducted right now. In the meantime, I think it's very reasonable for people with MS to have a vitamin D level checked and then take vitamin D supplements to bring the vitamin D level up to the normal range. Another nutrient that gets talked about less is vitamin B12. That's certainly not as sexy as vitamin D these days, but we've known for decades, subgroup of people with MS are prone to vitamin B12 deficiency. And also some medications such as antacids, Diabetes medications can increase risk for vitamin B12 deficiency. B12 deficiency can mimic MS. So you certainly don't want to have both going on and have confusion about what is what. So as with vitamin D, checking a vitamin B12 level I think is very reasonable and then getting it into the normal range with supplements if that's needed. So those are two supplements to think about. There's a very long list of supplements that can potentially do harm. That list is now more than 200 in number. So these are supplements that 
can potentially activate the immune system and negate the beneficial effects of MS medications. There are a variety of supplements that could potentially worsen MS symptoms or add into the side effects of medications that we use for MS. So, like I say, a very long list of supplements to avoid or use with caution. And then the overall strategy in this area really should not be to focus on supplements, but to really think about food and think about whole food, kind of what food uh, is being taken in. And I think we all know kind of what a generally healthy diet is. It's often a challenge to keep that going, but I, I'll, uh, the, in terms of the specific uh, elements of that, uh, Michael Pollan has uh, distilled his many uh, thousands of pages about healthy eating into seven words, which I quote frequently in my clinic every day. So it's eat food, not too much, mostly plants. And that's the essential element of all different general healthy eating uh, approaches. If you want specific dietary approaches, there's the DASH diet, TLC diet, a more recent one, the MIND, M-I-N-D diet, Weight Watchers, vegetarian diet, Mediterranean diet. The essential elements of all of those are those seven words of Michael Pollan. And then the final fourth strategy, which is incorporated into what I just said, is to not eat too much food. And there's growing evidence that uh, obesity, especially in teenage girls, can increase risk for MS. And then some evidence that if you have MS, the disease course could potentially be worsened by uh, obesity. That's a challenging area to address, especially if someone has disability with their MS, but I think that's something that certainly needs to be kept in mind and dealt with uh, in appropriate ways. In the end, what diet is the best for MS? We may have some answers to that in a few years because there are some very well-funded studies being done looking at specific diets in the context of MS. My prediction is we're never going to find one diet that's the absolute best diet for MS. Uh, I think we will end up finding the worst diet for MS, and that's the standard American diet. So the general strategy should be to deviate in a healthy direction away from the standard American diet, and if you do that, may well have benefits for some MS symptoms, and certainly will have benefits for preventing diet-related medical conditions like obesity, high blood pressure, diabetes, uh, and high cholesterol, stroke, heart disease, and we know all of those conditions can negatively impact uh, MS. <clears throat> I often think of uh, diet in uh, an analogy uh, in terms of the standard American diet and how harmful it is on the body. I think of, for example, someone hitting their thumb with a hammer and they stop doing that, <clears throat> and they start watching TV, and then they claim that watching TV helps thumb pain. Someone else hits their thumb with a hammer, stops doing that, starts eating a banana, they claim eating bananas helps thumb pain, and then the two of those people go on TV to debate whether uh, eating a banana or watching TV helps with thumb pain, and in fact, neither one is the magic cure, it's the fact that they took away something negative. So I think that's an important concept to keep in mind when you hear about diets that are out there, what kind of benefits they've had. Is it really the diet itself, or is it the lack of the unhealthy American diet? <clears throat> also, something that I've heard hundreds of times from my patients, and I must say, when I first started my career, I would not have thought this was realistic. I would have thought this was idealistic mumbo jumbo, but I have heard hundreds of times from my own patients, them spontaneously telling me this, that their MS diagnosis was actually something they leveraged in their head to start living a healthier life, including uh, embarking on a healthier diet than they ever had, ever had previously. So I think that's something very important to keep in mind, and I think that's uh, a missed opportunity often uh, for people with MS and their clinicians to really think that uh, this kind of bad news diagnosis of MS can actually be used in a positive way to improve diet and actually maybe improve health and prevent disease over the long term. 
So how do you embark on this particular plan? I would say the first step would be to sit in a chair and think about this and is your heart really behind this? You know, this is not something any clinician can monitor you for. They can't be with you 24 seven. They can't monitor your diet. So this is an element of healthcare where the accountability really is with you. So you really need to have it in your head that you want to do this. And like I say, there's a way, I think there are various ways people do it, but to take that MS diagnosis and want to have some control with it by choosing which foods you eat. Uh, and then also over the long term, potentially having uh, a healthier life in terms of other diseases processes than you would have otherwise. So uh, I'd conclude by saying and uh, countering what is often expressed out there in uh, many clinical settings, I would counter that diet has a lot to do with MS. I would say addressing diet should be uh, central in the uh, treatment plan for people with MS. And paradoxically, I think people with MS have a tool that many other people don't in that that MS diagnosis can be used to uh, produce change in diet and other healthy lifestyle change. Thank you.